This is a continuation with the second lecture in the skeletal system. Any bump and groove on a bone has a name. Many of the names have similar meanings. Both the foramen and a meatus mean a hole in bone, such as the foramen magnum in the skull and the external auditory meatus in the ear. A fossa is a flat surface on bone, such as the iliac fossa on the pelvis. A condyle is a rounded surface, such as the occipital condyle. A head is a rounded projection, like on the femur head. A tuberosity is a thickened surface on bone, such as the tibial tuberosity you can feel just below your kneecap. A spine is an elevated edge on bone, like the spine of the scapula. A spinous process is the posterior projections on the vertebrae, which are the bumps you feel going down the center of your back. A trochanter is a thickened projection on bone, like the greater trochanter you can feel on the lateral side of your hips. A crest is a sharp edge on bone, such as the iliac crest, which you can feel at the top of the pelvic bowl. The axial skeleton is made of the bones in the torso and head and includes the skull with both of the cranial and facial bones. The hyoid supports the tongue and the vertebrae also run down the spine. We have four cranial bones. The parietal bones, which you can see here, are on the superior lateral portion of the head and the temporal bones are located inferior on the lateral portion. The frontal bone is on the anterior superior portion and the occipital bone on the posterior inferior portion of the head. There are several facial bones but there are only two you're expected to know in this class. The mandible is the lower jaw bone and the maxilla is the upper jaw bone. So here we can see the mandible and the maxilla. The sutures are the joints between the skull bones. We have the frontal, sagittal, coronal, lamboidal, and squamosal sutures. You can usually feel the coronal suture superior to your temples. The frontal suture will separate the, two, the frontal bone into two halves. The sagittal suture separates the parietal bones. The coronal is going to separate the frontal and parietal the lamboid separating the parietal and occipital, and the squamosal separating the temporal and occipital and parietal and sphenoid bones. The sinuses are hollow spaces in bone. These produce mucus along with lightening the skull and giving resonance to the voice. This is why your voice will sound funny to you when you have sinus congestion. It changes the resonance. The fontanelles are the soft spots on an infant's head to allow the skull to compress at birth. We have an anterior fontanelle, which would be located right about in this area on this infant, a posterior, two sphenoid, and two mastoid fontanelles. Generally, you will only be able to palpate the anterior one, and these will ossify somewhere between ages 12 and 18 months. We have 24 vertebrae of the spine. This includes seven cervicals named C1 to C7, 12 thoracics named T1 to T12, and five lumbars named L1 to L5. About 20% of the population has an extra or is missing one. The extra is just added onto the region that it most closely matches up with. C1 and C2 also have different shapes than the other vertebrae and are also known as the atlas and axis. The sacrum is five fused segments just inferior to L5. The coccyx is the tailbone made of three fused segments inferior to the sacrum. On this spine here we can see in this region you have your cervical vertebrae, the seven of them. You have the twelve thoracic vertebrae, your five lumbar vertebrae, your sacrum, and the coccyx down at the bottom. Our spine normally has anterior and posterior curves. The kyphosis is normal in the thoracic spine, 
and is anterior concave, posterior convex. Anterior is the concave is easy to remember on this one because concave is the side where the cave is. A lordosis is normal in both the cervical and lumbar spine. It is anterior convex and posterior concave. Scoliosis involves lateral curves of the spine and those are not considered normal curves. The sternum is the breastbone on the anterior chest. We have 12 pairs of ribs. Seven are true ribs, which attach to bone in the back and to bone in the front. We have three false ribs below these that are going to attach to bone in the back and to cartilage in the front. There are two floating ribs that attach to bone in the back and do not have any front attachment. The appendicular skeleton is the bones of the arms and the legs. The upper limb listed from proximal to distal includes the scapula or the shoulder blade, the clavicle or your collarbone, the humerus in your upper arm, the radius and ulna in your forearm. The easy way to remember it is the radius is on the thumb side, the radius has an R in it, and the radius is the one that rotates, the carpals in the wrist, the metacarpals in the hand, and the phalanges in the fingers. When we look at the ulna outside the body, it also will have a U-shape on one end, which is helpful in remembering which bone is the ulna. The thumb has two segments, while the rest of the phalanges each have three. The lower limb begins with the os coxae or pelvis made of three fused segments. The ilium, which will be at the sides, the ischium at the bottom in the back, and the pubis in the front. Traveling distally, we have the femur, the large bone in the upper leg, the patella or kneecap, the tibia, which is the large bone in the lower leg, the fibula, which is the little bone or the lateral bone in the lower leg. The way I remember this is fibula has an L in it, and I think L for fibula and lateral. Tarsals in the ankle, metatarsals in the feet, and the phalanges of the toes. The patella is a sesamoid bone embedded, embedded in the quadriceps tendon, but not attached directly to bone. The tibia is the larger bone, while the fibula is the smaller bone. The phalanges of the feet follow the same pattern as the hands with the number of segments.